I'm Joshua Kimball and this is my vloggins. Uh, this is the vlog where I do a lot of vlogging. Um, that's the worst intro ever. Anyhow, um, I'm on my way home from where I work as a full-time art director. Uh, I just got finished uh, doing some uh, marketing materials and fun stuff like that. And now I'm trying to clear my head so that by the time I get home, I can take a quick power nap and then get on to the roughs for the, um, I think it's page 74? I think 74 of Not Death But Love. The problem is like, once you get this far into pages, it's hard to kind of keep track of which page you're on off the top of your head, at least for me. Um, anyhow, so let me make a left turn real quick. <laughs> So anyhow, like, uh, I've been thinking a lot about how much I really enjoy our community. Um, I got to listen in on Christopher Runtman's uh, latest video, um, and it was just fun to kind of, like, listen to him while I was at work. I uh, mentioned, said a few things in the comment section. It was fun to watch a live vlog of somebody from our community. And it made me realize, like, I'm really enjoying the live streaming thing. Also, I think, like, Adam Lore posted <laughs> something. I don't know if it's on there anymore, but I think he had AI generation doing um, Joe Biden's voice endorsing uh, Jacob's apartment. And I asked him if I could get a copy of the video, um, you know, and I'd be if I'd be okay to uh, play it um, on my channel. Uh, because I think that would be hilarious. <laughs> so anyhow, um, it was very funny. It was it was Joe Biden uh, endorsing Jacob's apartment. Very funny. I was very pleased to have Joe Biden do such an endorsement. Um, and I'm excited about the stream tonight. I've I've been really enjoying like hanging out with you guys in the chats and stuff like that. And uh, it it gives me something to look forward to. Other than the typical kind of existential dread you feel. <laughs> I don't know, maybe I'm crazy, but I tend to, when I'm approaching art, um, I get both a joy and an, and an existential dread from the process of making comics. Um, I enjoy the process. I've gotten better at enjoying the process than I used to be. But part of enjoying the process has been incorporating live streaming and kind of sharing what I'm working on um, with everyone. And so that's been really cool. Um, oh, I should mention who I am. Uh, you're tuning into my my vlog. I'm uh, Joshua Kemble. I'm an art director. Uh, I've been doing that for about seven years. I've done graphic design and illustration for over 20 years. And uh, when I'm not art directing and doing graphic design and illustration, I'm working on comics like Jacob's Apartment, a slice of life story about two roommates that are polar opposites that end up uh, both going through different struggles. Like one is a Christian and the other is an atheist. Uh, Jacob, uh, the Christian, is thrown into a loop um, after his father's death um, to where he's questioning his identity and his purpose and his belief system. And Sarah is reeling from a past relationship that didn't really work out. And um, both of them are kind of struggling to find their identities as well as define their identities uh, like you do in your early 20s um, through, uh, that was weird. There's a big honk of a truck, um, but we're just kind of dead at a dead stop. Uh, at a red light. Anyhow, so both are trying to find their identities um, as well as define their identities like you would in your 20s, um, you know, through art and writing and uh, comics. And as they're kind of going through this like identity shifting, questioning of things, um, their dreams and reality start interweaving in what I would call like kind of a, a, a if you like Eternal Sunshine for the Spotless Mind and you mix that with Ghost World, the kind of slice of life nature of these books, um, you might actually really enjoy uh, Jacob's Apartment. And then there's two stories, which is my graphic novel about 
trying to destigmatize heavy conversations about um, about mental illness. Uh, it talks about my journey learning how to deal with depression, uh, experiencing hypocrisy at a young age at a Christian school, as well as caregiving for somebody with panic disorder, and uh, and deals with really heavy topics, so it's definitely not for kids. It uh, deals with uh, topics like suicide and um, other such heavy things. So it's definitely not a light read, but uh, I poured my heart into that book. And so Two Stories is available um, as well. Links are down below. So if you have watched my vlogs or my channel and you haven't yet, um, pick those up. Okay, so that is my little, um, my little drop of stuff, but yeah, so I have just been filled with exhilaration, um, all day about going home and streaming and working on comics, uh, because I've been having such a fun time with the community, um, and that's a really cool byproduct of kind of building community, um, even if it's an online community, it's like, I think that the benefit of community for artists, at least for myself, very selfishly I'll say, is that it gives you something to anticipate when you're working on your work, and it gives you kind of like a, you're like a cheerleader for these people succeeding at what their ambitions are, and uh, and I feel like I have a squad of people kind of cheering me on and, and wanting to see me succeed, and like what better thing do you want? You know kind of as an artist but that so that's been really cool um, I have been really enjoying the fact that it's not raining in fact I should open this uh, sunroof I mean not the sunroof but just the window of it um, so I can get some daylight but I've been enjoying that like the fact that it's not raining which is really good uh, the rain has been hideously uh, oppressive. Um, and then I've also been thinking about just how far support goes for an artist. So this is kind of roughly like, you know, it's my vlog, so I'm kind of talking off the cuff. But, uh, but my thought is like, it, it, even the video that Adam posted where it was like a, a joke, but it was like Joe Biden uh, endorsing Jacob's apartment, it made me feel really good. Um, and I think doing things like that or referencing people's work, uh, mentioning friends of yours and like kind of being a cheerleader for other people is a really good method to kind of um, keep us all on the, on the tracks. Um, Cause we're all on a train, the way I look at it, heading toward success. Um, we're toward like the finish of our projects. And uh, and the last thing we wanna do is make that process uh, terrible for the artists that have to do it. Uh, I think doing encouraging things like um, showing up on each other's live streams, um, you know, buying each other's work, um, really just advocating for uh, each other's stuff to sell and move. I think these are all really good things. Um, so yeah, that's been on my mind. Um, I am juggling a lot right now, so I do feel like a bit overwhelmed. Um, for those of you who might not know, I, I work full time as an art director. So that sucks up a, a good chunk of my day. Um, and then my commute, if you combine it both ways, is at minimum like two hours of driving. So you had eight hours working, two hours driving, so that's 10 hours out of my day. Um, usually by the time I get home, I'm pretty exhausted. And so to, you know, and, and basically with the new schedule um, that I've been having to run just to work on this graphic novel, I basically get home, nap, <clears throat> maybe eat before, uh, eat dinner, nap, and then, uh, tuck my kid in um, after reading him a book. Right now we're reading The Hobbit, which is <coughs> epic nerdiness. <clears throat> and we should all be reading J.R.R. Tolkien to our kids to, to create the epic nerds that we all want to have as children. 
<laughs> um, anyhow, my point is, we're, so we've been reading The Hobbit, but we'll read like a couple, like half a chapter or to a chapter, and then, uh, you know, we, we um, I tuck him in and then, and then he goes to bed. Then I usually will hit, that's when my work time starts. So like my son's bedtime is usually nine. Uh, it's 8.30, but he's usually not asleep till nine. Um, and so really after that, I, I usually am about ready to start working and stuff like that at about 9.30 or 10. Um, and that's when I'll usually start working on comics and go from there to like two in the morning or something like that. Sometimes till like 11, sometimes till midnight. So it's very exhausting and, um, and it's very overwhelming dealing with the work stuff, that stuff. And then because of the small window of time, anything additional uh, just really feels almost impossible to juggle. Um, but I am seeing where I'm at as like a, a, a blessing because it's like, it's good stuff to be busy with. Um, it, it's, it's a blessing that I'm able to work on this book and it's a blessing that I have this awesome community to kind of keep me company because it can get a little lonely when I'm like at work, I see coworkers, but I'm working, right? And then I'm at home and it's like quite often, like I, I have a little bit of time with my family, but most of my time is spent working on comics. And so it's very nice to have like, um, to have like that bullpen kind of environment that I think is so important for artists and stuff like that. So I've been kind of rambling, but that's uh, some thoughts that kind of cross my mind. Um, I think the whole purpose of this was just to highlight community and how awesome community is. trying to think what else. Um, oh, I have been doing music with my friend Josh, the guy that we had no saboteurs with. So uh, for those of you who don't know, I also do music for fun. And I have this band that's kind of like this post-punk band um, slash alternative indie band called No Saboteurs. And we've put out um, two albums. Um, but our drummer uh, moved out of state, and so the band is pretty much on hiatus. However, Josh and I, um, my, my friend Josh, it's funny, we're, we've been best friends since I was in ninth grade. So, let's see. Yeah, we've been best, for, best friends for a very long time. I can't even do the math on it, but it's, it's easily over 20 years. Um, and we're both named Josh, which I think is hilarious. Um, but anyhow, he's a great musician and a really good collaborator. And one of those people, like for people like me who like doing things like graphic novels that are not team projects, um, you know, I, I, I really, with music, have trouble collaborating with other people. But with him, we always feed off of each other and come up with stuff we never would have thought of before. And so it's been really fun on Sundays. Um, not not a lot of the recent Sundays, but uh, this Sunday we got back to kind of working and we're about two tracks in and we started our third track. So we have two songs completed, at least semi-completed, and we're on to our third song. And at this point we're just doing it as like a recording project, um, just kind of writing really weird stuff. But it's, it's really interesting what we're coming up with. It's coming out very different from anything we've done before. Um, much more experimental and across genres and stuff like that. Um, and we're kind of building it with this yes and mentality. And I guess that's another uh, topic I could kind of bring up. But it's like when you're collaborating with people, I know this is like probably cliche to talk about, but yes ending is so important. It's like an improvisational kind of technique where, you know, if you want people to feel comfortable to get goofy and uh, make jokes, uh, the, the worst thing you can do, at least in an improv sense, is like shut somebody down um, from a bit that they're starting. Um, the way that 
you're trained, and again, I'm no improvisational uh, comedian, but from what I've read and what I've heard on interviews and stuff, the way an improv uh, comedian is trained is to yes end things. So rather than go on the negative, what you wanna do is say yes, and then contribute something else. So it's like, um, you know, somebody comes in and says, I'm a hippopotamus. And it's like, you go, yes, you are, and I'm a giraffe, right? I, I'm just saying that's that's um, that's kind of the the method of, of improv as, as far as I understand it, like with yes ending. And that goes big time with music because when you're collaborating, playing music with people, um, especially writing music, cause it's different writing than performing somebody else's song. If you're performing somebody else's song, it's really easy to know where the ground is and whether you're nailing it or not. Like, it, it's not, I'm not saying it's easy to play other people's songs, but I'm saying to navigate it and know the level of judgment that is required for it to be good is a little bit easier. It's a little more simplified in black and white than it is writing music where writing music is a very vulnerable thing and it's very much about feeling. Like, um, when it, whenever I'm writing a song, it's very much like the, the chords just kind of feel right and there's chords that don't feel right. There's notes that feel right. There's notes that don't feel right. There's times where you want to change stuff up or try something new or like improvise and like um, experiment with something or record something that's insane that might actually sound good. Um, and to have a collaborator who will give you honest feedback, like if something's not working, they'll say, hey, that's not working. But mostly a collaborator is there to kind of yes end with music. So it's like, I, I like that guitar riff, let's add this. Okay, I like that, let's add this. Well, what if we did this? Yeah, well, what if we did this? Well, let's try it. Um, that kind of collaborative uh, nature is really great for working on art with other people. And I've seen that in art as well, in graphic design. Um, the best collaborations are usually yes ending um, other people. It, it's a good way to kind of get buy-in and get the best out of um, the people that you're working with on whatever project it is, and art-wise. Um, and so, I was just thinking about that off the cuff because I was trying to think like, well, why do I enjoy doing music, particularly with my friend Josh? We're really good at yes ending each other. We're good at um, at uh, hearing somebody else's uh, idea that they're kind of being vulnerable. They're like, I don't know if this is crazy, this might be stupid, but, you know, and the second the thing said, usually it's like, let's try it, or let's yes end it. Or yeah, let's do that, but maybe we can add uh, this element to what you suggested, and I think that'll make it work. That kind of thing is really helpful with collaboration, and it also makes the process really fun and kind of enjoyable, and you get results that you wouldn't quite expect. Because when you yes end, much like improvisational uh, comedy or whatever, um, you end up in territories you would have never dreamed of, right? Because you both kind of diverge your paths, um, and you're kind of guiding each other on this like weird, uh, strange art experimentation that can end up in really cool territories. Um, and so, Yes ending, uh, another improv thing that I think would apply to like why I like um, doing music with him, and also I like with collaborative environments uh, with other artists, I, and I just said collaborative instead of collaborative. But yeah, um, another thing that comes to mind about it is um, I, I, I want to impress my friend because we have really similar taste in music. Um, we both like a lot of the same things musically. And I know he has good taste, at least in my opinion. And so what I present, like whenever we're collaborating, I want it to be an addition. I want it to be better. I want it to be good. So there's a little bit of wanting to impress and do good but at the same time, we're both very comfortable failing at 
whatever project we're working on. Um, and, and that ability to fail actually allows us to be more creative. And that reminds me of graphic design illustration. And that doesn't even only apply to, um, to uh, collaborative stuff, but that can apply to like your own solo work, right? Like if you're working on a graphic novel and you're so afraid of failure uh, when you're working on your project, you may never actually complete it. You may never let go of a page and let it be done. Or you may never try something new like a new medium or something like that that you haven't tried uh, because of a fear of failure. So I, I guess what I'm getting at is like for peak creativity when collaborating with other people or with yourself when you're, uh, when you're working on your own stuff, I think it is helpful, I find it helpful to allow yourself to yes and your ideas and to yes and other people's ideas. Um, so that's number one, like do a little bit of improvisation. I'm not saying throw out structure, right? Structure, like in music, with no structure, you're just a jam band and you're gonna annoy the shit out of people, right? But with some structure, you can come up with some really cool things. And I remember I was talking on Gary Hodge's uh, uh, show on Saturday. Uh, Gary Hodges has a really great YouTube channel and he uh, does like a stream every Saturday generally. And he had just completed D versus M and we had some really cool conversations. But one of the things that was brought up um, on that show was the idea of like Miles Davis and um, Miles Davis's improvisation and kind of experimentation on his later albums after Bitches Brew came out, which is the, the like the quintessential Miles Davis album, in my opinion, is Bitches Brew. It's, it's like this kind of game changer album. But it was talking about how to a lot of people who don't know structure, that might sound like nonsense, right? But to people who know structure and music, they, they can kind of see what Miles Davis is doing. And again, like no matter how wild Miles Davis goes, he never throws out the structure entirely. He might temporarily toss it to, to go on like a little journey musically, but he always comes back to the structure. And there is an underlying fundamental and structure in what he's doing, which is why it works, even though it can sound a little chaotic to like untrained ears. Um, it's kind of like whiskey, right? Like, um, and that was brought up too, where it's like whiskey is a uh, developed taste and there's fine whiskeys and there's cheap whiskeys, right? But just because a whiskey to a non-whiskey drinker tastes like really gross does not necessarily mean it tastes gross. It might just be that you don't have a developed taste for it, right? I'm not saying you guys should drink whiskey. A million things like that in life. But anyhow, that's uh, some thoughts of what I'm thinking about on my drive home. I'm excited about the live stream. I hope to see you guys there. I hope that I will have the energy to rock the next rough. Um, and I really am looking forward to hopefully playing a little bit of Risk World Domination as well um, tonight as a reward for me finishing my work. So we'll see how that goes, but um, I, I do wanna say um, I appreciate you guys. If you can, before you're done with this video, hit that like, hit that subscribe, hit the bell so you get notifications when I'm about to go live. And of all wonderful things, um, if you watch the live streams and aren't participating in the chats, definitely hop on and participate in the chats. It's a fun group of people, a lot of really inspiring, funny artists, um, a lot of humor, a lot of fun. Um, a lot of good stuff. Um, also, if you guys have any topics that you want me to hit on these uh, videos, like my vlogs, um, let me know in the comments section if you have any questions or anything you want to hear about art or professional art or anything like that. Um, any questions at all, I'm more than happy. I have years of experience doing uh, commercial art and uh, doing graphic novels um, as well. And so uh, I'd love to um, 
love to entertain whatever questions you might have. All right, that's gonna do it. I will see you guys on the next uh, vlogins, or preferably I'll see you on the next live stream. All right, that's it. And uh, how many times, how many ways can I say that's it, it's time? I don't know. Anyhow, um, that'll do it. I'll see you guys on the next one. Bye.